Good morning. Today we're looking at section 1.6, finding numerical solutions with goal seek out of business calculus with Excel. The basic setup is that goal seek is a tool that Excel can use to find numerical solutions to problems. We're going to look at some skills to acquire. Given a basic formula for f of x, we'd like to find the x value that gives a specified y value. If I have two functions, I'd like to find out where the curves intersect or where they have the same value. I'd like to understand the limitations of goal seek, that it's not exact, how you deal with multiple roots and spurious answers, and then I'd like to look at a complicated example with amortization. As is the normal practice, I'll follow the structure of the text but not do the same examples. Videos of the text examples are attached. And it's worthwhile to look at the formulas. I've set up some basic problems. A simple function, which is f of x equals 3x plus 5. I'm going to look at the quadratic function minus x minus 2 times x minus 7. That's a parabola going down. And then a cubic function shifted up. And so if we just had the cubic function, the roots would be at 5, minus 1, and minus 6. But I've shifted it up so that the answers are things that we really don't know how to find. So for the first one, I'd like to find out where 3x plus 5 is 20. That, of course, I know is going to be 5 because I can do that on pencil and paper, but I'd like Excel to do that. I'm going into the Data tab and do What If Analysis, Goal Seek. I'd like to change cell B2 to 20. And I'd like to do that by changing the x value by changing the value of A2. I then say OK. And it computes the answer for me and says that if x is 5, then 3x plus 5 is 20. If I wanted to pick a different number, I'm going to look at 11, where I know the answer is 2. I change b2 to 11 by changing a2, and I get the desired answer of if x is 2, then we have the value we're looking for. It's worthwhile to look at what happens if it's a quadratic function. I started with linear functions, and it's going to give me an exact answer, or exact as far as it can. But if I look at quadratic functions, so I'm looking at minus 2x minus quantity x minus 2 times x minus 7, and I'd like that to go to 0. I set it up the same way. Do what if analysis, goal seek, and I'd like b7 to be 0 by changing a7. And it finds an answer, but notice it didn't get it equal to zero. It got it close to zero. What goal seek is going to do is find something that's within one over a thousand. So I can try it again. What if analysis goal seek change b9 to zero by changing a9? And again, it's finding something that's pretty close to the right answer. That we know the answer should have been seven and 2, but it didn't get the exact answer. It just got it pretty close. One of the problems with numerical solutions is all it does is get close. I then look at a problem that is a shifted cubic polynomial. So if I didn't have that plus 1 there, this would have roots at 5, 1, and 6. And I'm going to start out by doubling up anywhere where I'm going to have a starting point. So as above, I know where I've started. I'm going to do what if analysis goal seek. B13 should change to 0 by changing A13. And it gives me an answer close to my starting point. If I do the same thing here, I'm going to do what if analysis goal seek 
B16 goes to 0 by changing A16. And it gives me an answer that's close by. One of the things worth noting is that essentially goal seek slides downhill to get to the closest answer. If I'm starting at 3 and I know there are answers at 1 and 5, it's not clear to me off the top where the answer will be, which answer it'll go to. Goal seek to 0 by changing A22. And it goes to 1. If I had started at 4 with goal seek, I'm going to go to 0 by changing A24. And notice it's trying to get to 5. And so the basic method is it's sliding downhill to the closest answer. Another thing to use goal seek is to find intersections. I've pulled an example where I have a supply price and a demand price, and trying to solve where those two are equal would be kind of ugly. And all I do is I simply take the difference of the two, and finding the intersection of the two curves is the same as finding where the distant difference equals zero. I look at the chart and say somewhere close to 100. So I'm going to try goal seek on the difference. What if analysis goal seek I'm going to change to zero by changing A20. And it gives me an answer for that. It's worth noting that Goal Seek works on more complicated things. I've started a setup as if I were trying to do a retirement fund, and I've decided for retirement I'm going to put in $2,000 a year, and I'm going to increase that by $100 a year. And I found a bank that will give me 5% interest. I'd like to know how much I retire at the end of 40 years. Well, the setup is, pr is pretty simple. If I go back to the formulas and show my formulas, I have an initial balance. I have the deposit. Initially, that's $2,000, what was in B1. In subsequent years, it was ever the previous balance plus the change. The interest is the initial balance plus the deposit times the interest rate. And the end balance is the initial balance plus the deposit plus the interest and the new beginning balance is the old end balance. So this gives me lots of steps, but it tells me how much money I'll have in 40 years. I'm going to unshow the formulas, and I'd like to know if instead of $423,000, I'd like to have a half million dollars for retirement, and what I'm gonna do is start out at $2,000, but I'm thinking about changing my increment. So I'm going to go to my data tab. What if analysis goal seek? I'd like E1 to go to 500,000 by changing cell B2. And it says I'll get to that if instead of increasing my contribution by $100, I increase by $145. Well, I'm going to try the same thing, except I'd like to have not $500,000, but $700,000, or $750,000. I want three quarters of a million when I retire. And once again, I'm going to change cell B2. And it computes it for me and says, I need to be bumping up my contribution by $300 a year so that to get to three quarters of a million dollars, I need to essentially be doing a $300 increase every year for the 40 years. This is a worthwhile example because it's a complicated enough formula that I have no chance of solving it by hand. In Under the Hood, this uses something called Newton's Method. We will understand more of it as we go through the course in calculus, but you take the error how far off you are from your desired amount. So I'm going to look at x squared and ask, 
I'm interested in my goal being finding the square root of 5. And I initially guess 1 just because 1's a number to guess. It finds the error, finds the slope at that point. We'll learn how to do that in this course. The error divided by the slope is how far it should go to get to the right answer. Reminding you from the text that we have an initial answer. We draw a tangent line to our goal. This is going to be our new guess, and we're going to repeat that process. What we see with this is I have it set up to repeat the process and what the error divided by the slope is, and I get to 5 as my answer relatively fast on the square root. If I'm interested in, say, finding the square root of 10, once again, it's 3.6 3.16227766, and it gets to that relatively quick by doing this method. It shows you some of the power of Newton's method. We'll learn that more. I've also set it up so that if I'm looking at e to the x, I'm just going to guess that e to the 35 is 5. That's a horrible guess, but it tries it out and does the same method and eventually comes down to saying, if I want e to the x to be 5, x should be 1.60943. And so it works it out pretty quickly. Again, if instead of 5, I wanted e to the x to be 23, it's going to find that, as the, which is the natural logarithm of this, and I get 3.1549. So Newton's method works fairly well and is fairly robust. There's a couple of things we want to look at. Given it's Newton's method and how it sets it up, there are some places it can go wrong. The first place it can go wrong is if I have a function that gets close to zero but isn't there, it can't tell the difference between equal and close to. So if I start with x is 1 and ask will 1 over x to the fourth be equal to 0, I'm going to try goal seek. I'd like to go by 0 by changing a3. We know there is no answer to this question, but goal seek finds 1 anyways because at 6.134, 1 over x to the fourth is small enough that goal seek can't tell the difference between that and zero. It's also worth noting how we can get more accurate. If I'd like to get a square root of 6, I'm going to set it up with goal seek, and I'd like the error to be zero. I'll change a9, and it gives me an answer, but I can see there's still an error there. It's less than 1 over 1,000. One of the things to do is I've set this problem up where we had the error, and then 1,000 times the error. So instead of asking for the error to go to 0, I'm going to do goal seek and ask for 1,000 times the error to go to 0, and it finds a more accurate answer that it's close enough that when I just look at the numbers, I can't tell the difference because there's an error of 10 to the minus 11th. And if I were to do something silly like say, I'd like a billion times the error to be zero, I do goal seek, I'd like a billion times the error to be zero, I'm going to change A12, and it's going to find the answer such that a billion times it is zero. Notice these two look like they're the same. The difference is when we go to more digits, and even when we go to more digits, we can't tell the difference by looking at them. So issues that we have with goal C, if it gets close but never cross the lines, our goal C can't tell the difference between lines being very close and actually crossing. And I can check for the error be less than 1 over 1,000. 
or I could multiply and ask some multiple of the error to be less than 1 over 1,000, and that gives me better accuracy. But this gives you an idea of how to solve problems with goal C. Thank you.